Welcome to my lecture on reproductive system part two. So we'll do female anatomy and physiology, external, internal, reproductive organs, got hormones a little bit, and then we'll look at um, where fertilization takes place and ovulation and the, the development of the egg. We did spermatogenesis, you know, briefly last lecture, and this would be oogenesis, the uh, production of eggs, and talk about how they differ, but won't go into great detail, and again, not into meiotic divisions, things like that. Um, and then we won't get into um, pregnancy and, and birth and uh, genetics, but there are chapters in your book that cover those, but we just don't have time for it. <clears throat> and then we'll finish off, talk about um, STIs and birth control a little bit at the end, kind of uh, wrap it up. All right, let's do it. All right, so indeed we have <clears throat> internal organs <clears throat> like the uterus and the ovaries and such, and then we'll have the external organs on the outside as well. well. We'll cover them all. So the female reproductive system, as you can think, it's a little more complicated. I talked about um, how not only do you have to develop eggs and store them and uh, you need to deliver them, have a place for fertilization to take place, and then you need a vessel to incubate this fetus for nine months, right? And so it's really a complex symphony of uh, hormones that are going on to, to keep this pregnancy going. Um, lots of things can go wrong. And uh, you need a uterus that can expand, you know, hugely, right? And the vagina will be a conduit for, uh, well, the kid to come out and uh, for sex, sperm to come in. Um, so yeah, take a look. So produce, produce the ova or the eggs receive the sperm, have a place for fertilization to take place. The embryo, if successful, implant in the wall of the uterus. And then you need to, you know, make a placenta and have it able to uh, grow for all that time and develop. And isn't that a beautiful term for childbirth? Expels mature fetus. It's like, you're out of here, you know, you're gonna expel the fetus. Yeah. All right, so, I. Uh, Men, like I said, spermatogenesis happens from puberty on, really. But women have a window here to, uh, to have um, uh, birth. And uh, we call when you first uh, uh, hit puberty, have your first period, uh, menarche. And uh, then it's going to go on, you know, from your early teens until menopause. And that will occur mid-40s, 50s for almost all women. And so, yeah, you got a window there, you know, 30 some, some years and only once a month is ovulation. And we'll see, it turns out here, we're talking about 300 to 400 eggs. Think about once a month, 34 years. And, uh, and men, you know, produce 500 billion sperm. All right, so yeah, big difference here. <clears throat> and then uh, of course our menstrual cycle uh, is going to be, you know, a monthly, a monthly kind of cycle, right? And uh, so uh, we have that, and whereas most mammals have estrus, where they go into heat. And I talked about that in the last, last lecture. Um, yeah, our ovulation is pretty hidden. It's actually hard to tell unless you take your exact temperature first thing in the mo morning, and then it's going to be a slight peak there if you're taking hormone levels. But, you know, other animals, it's obvious when their females are in heat because they advertise it, and then that's when they meet. All right, and these changes, of course, also make a big difference because you produce sperm daily constantly, right? Millions per day. Uh, eggs are all produced when you're still a fetus. Um, you have millions of these eggs that are, you know, could potentially become offspring. And then uh, when you're born, it's, it's just cut down to a few hundred thousand. And like I say, you only use uh, three, 400 in your lifetime. And so these eggs are actually, they wait. They're not made fresh every day. They wait from birth. So if you have a kid at 45 years old, you know, that egg is, that cell has been in there for over 40 years. And so, you know, you'll hear uh, as you get older, there's a greater chance for uh, birth defects, chromosomal defects, especially because, um, um, you know, if you don't have during meiosis chromosomes equally pulled, you could have trisomy, or you could have, you know, a lack of a chromosome or an extra one kind of thing going on, or it could be hit with, chemicals and x-rays and things like that because the eggs are sitting there. 
Um, men, it's not really clear. Uh, older men have more birth defects with their sperm because they are made every day. All right. So we'll start with the ovaries. And these are the homologous. When I say homologous, it means they came from the same tissue. And so up under the kidneys, men develop testes that descend all the way out. Women, they turn into ovaries and they go down and then they stop in the pelvis. They descend you know, a shorter distance. Yeah, so the ovary is a kind of egg-shaped, little round, hard um, 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 sphere, uh, or it's more oval, and uh, has that white look, just like the testes have that tunica albigenia, that, that white kind of coating on it. And if you're looking at a, a cadaver uh, ovary, um, it's going to be pockmarked everywhere because it has years and years of ovulation where eggs are going to pop out of that thing all over. And you can see it sits, uh, here's gonna be uh, your oviducts. And um, the ovary sits here and it's kind of tethered in place deep in there. You're gonna have a, a, a ligament, ovarian ligament attaches it to the, the uterus. That is homologous to the gubernaculum in the male. So it comes down, attaches there. And then a suspensory ligament is gonna kind of suspend it off the body wall, maybe blood vessels coming down like that. And the whole thing's in this big broad ligament, this big sheet. And so the ovary can move, but it's kind of tethered in place next to the, next to the uterus. And I want you to also notice here that the, 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 the oviduct and the ovary are not attached. And so when eggs ovulate out of this ovary, they're caught by these little fingers and then they're sucked in this tube. But some eggs can get lost and end up somewhere else, right? All right, so a lot going on here, but I'm gonna just kind of present what happens here. So you have in the ovary, and we have a medulla in the middle, and that's got blood vessels, connective tissue, and then the cortex on the outside. And that's filled with all these primordial follicles, you know, thousands and thousands of these things. And they're small and just lined by a simple layer, simple layer of squamous cells. And they're just waiting their turn. And if they get called up, like in baseball, called up to the big leagues, they will start developing. And this happens all the time from puberty on. You always have uh, eggs in different stages of development. And uh, these primary follicles, you'll see where the egg has a layer of cells around it. See that layer? So those squamous cells get bigger and they make many layers. And these cells that surround it, then we call it a follicle. So the follicle are these cells that surround the egg. And they're going to nourish it and they're going to produce hormones as we see as they get bigger they're going to produce hormones that go into your bloodstream and then a secondary follicle what you're going to see is that the egg is kind of on this little pedestal this little cloud and water forms in here a big lake forms all the way around it and eventually when you get a mature follicle this thing is big you can see it with your bare eye it's big and it's just filled with this this fluid and uh uh, the egg uh, has a nice little uh, crown around it and a little cloud that it sits on. So it sits in the middle of this lake. And uh, it gets so big, and then the pressure builds and the walls weaken, and then ovulation happens when it pops. And that fluid and uh, the egg get pushed out of the ovary into space. And luckily, right next to it is the, the oviduct that will catch that egg usually. Then what happens? Well, the fluid comes out and then all these follicle cells that have been growing and growing and growing turn into this yellow mass. And it's yellow because it's fat. There's fat in there. It produces a lot of uh, fatty hormones. And so we call it the corpus luteum. You know, corpus body, a corpse, corpus Christi. And luteum means yellow. So this is the yellow body. And this will sit there pumping out estrogen, progesterone um, for another couple of weeks, you know, you just ovulated and it's going to see. And if you don't have any pregnancy, it's going to start degenerating and turns into a white body, corpus albicans, albino, alba, white. And that's just like scar tissue like that. Yeah. But if you are pregnant, then hormones make this feedback loop that tell the corpus luteum to hold on, keep producing hormones, and it will stay there for the pregnancy making hormones. But if you don't get pregnant, then that corpus luteum doesn't get any feedback and it just, you know, just withers away. What do you guys think? It's pretty much a overview, <clears throat> kind of big picture. What's going on in your ovary? It's laid out like this, but of course it's more chaotic in life. Uh, but you've got uh, all these primordial follicles and some of them get called up and um, they start developing. And so at any one time, you've always got different ones at different uh, stages. And usually at ovulation, just one of them wins. And so one of them will get much bigger than the others. 
you know, maybe two, you know, you got paternal twins or something like that, or triplets, you could have three, but normally one. And uh, we think the ovaries also alternate right and left over time, but you can get pregnant with one ovary, right? It's just a little less likely. All right, very good. Oh, some follicles out in, in connective tissue. Uh, the medulla is the center. Uh, and then here you can see that here's that ovarian ligament attaching the ovary to the uterus. And here's the suspensory ligament coming down with the blood vessels in it like that. All right, here's a view of, a, of an ovary. And you kind of recognize, oh yeah, it's kind of typical. You can see here's the egg and here's the fluid around it. <clears throat> uh, on the surface of this thing, you're gonna see yeah, cuboidal cells and look at all those eggs uh, in various stages of development. And right underneath this cuboidal cells is this really tough connective tissue, the tunica albuginea, right? That white coat that's on the testes as well. It's also on the ovaries. All right, let's talk about our first reproductive uh, issue here. I think you guys know what's going on here. This is an ultrasound and we're looking at an ovary and it's got these, yeah, cysts. So ovarian cysts, very common. Um, ovarian cancer is, a, well, we'll talk about that, but ovarian cysts are different. This is just a, usually fluid filled and um, benign, meaning that they can cause pain, but they're not spreading, it's not cancerous. Um, you can imagine this happening, the surface of the ovary is, is like the moon, all these craters, because every ovulation, it, it rips, it blows out of there and it leaves a crater kind of. So you can imagine some of these fissures get closed off and then fluid can build up and can make a cyst. So because it's so such an active surface, you can see how uh, cysts can occur. Yeah, and here's a 93 pound uh, ovarian cyst, so they can get really big. And if you have these, uh, you might not do anything, but if it's causing great pain, et cetera, they can even do laparoscopic surgery and get in there, go through the vagina, and they can go in there or through the abdomen wall and uh, remove the cyst. And if it's a serious problem, they can remove the ovary. All right, so. We're looking here, this is a beautiful, it's so cool. It's such a beautiful picture. I remember in college I took, what was it called? Embryology or developmental biology. And it was, uh, went into painstaking detail, all these, all these stages, what's going on here. But when you look at this, it's just a gorgeous look here. I mean, here's the egg, there's the egg. Oh. And uh, this is all fluid surrounding it. So this is a really mature follicle and it's on its way to ovulating and then it'll, it'll burst and that egg will fly free. We'll, we'll leave the ovary. But as I said, in the fetus, you know, you got millions of these, uh, these potential eggs, millions. And then you can see by the time you're born, it's cut down to half a million, or th I think the book says 300,000 even. Um, that's what you're working with. And again, only like three or 400 get chosen eventually. So it's the cut is big from 5 million. Then, when, then almost all of those millions um, just degenerate and you're left with um, hundreds of thousands. And then every month, a few of them get called up and only like one usually gets called up to, to, to be ovulated. Um, and then at menopause, they all uh, degenerate and then you're done. Yeah, and so again, um, you can have fertility drugs and you can ovulate a lot. You know, we know how to make you guys have eight, you know, eggs. And if you, uh, you're doing kind of in vitro, you, you're having trouble having children, they can give you drugs to make you super ovulate. And then they usually go in and, and take harvest the eggs and they can you know, do it in, in petri dishes and stuff, fertilization. Um, so if they're gonna do that, if they're gonna harvest some eggs, they might as well make it, there's a lot of eggs to work with, right? Yeah. yeah, cool. And again, we don't know why out of all these, you know, think the millions of possibilities, which egg gets chosen to ovulate. You know, one of them grows faster and that's, that's the one. Yeah, taking a look, just one particular, you start out with this primordial follicle, just the egg and the squamous cells around it a little bit. But those squamous cells can really step up and make this really thick um, um, follicle with the, the egg in the middle with all these layers. And these cells that make up these layers are gonna make the hormones. And you can see by the time you get to the secondary follicle, you've got water forming, big lakes forming. And so this mature follicle has a huge lake of fluid. And look at some of these great, great words here. The, um, it sits on a cloud. I called it a cloud on purpose. The cumulus oliferous, the, the cloud, yeah, cumulus clouds, the cloud that the egg sits on. And then the corona radiata, you know, corona is crown, like 
uh, coronavirus has like a, a spikes on it. So here's this radiating crown around it. And the fluid, look at this liquor folliculi. That's ah, just fun to say, right? So yeah, pretty cool. That's an egg ready to go. Beautiful view. We're looking at an ovary. We see eggs of all different, um, all different stages, right? You know, this one being uh, the farthest along. Yeah. And you see the, the water just starts building up. All right, it's beautiful. So here's an egg and you can see, oh, here's this cloud it sits on, this cumulus oophorus. And then this corona radiata is gonna be a layer that surrounds the egg, nourishes it. It's gonna stay with it when it ovulates. And then all these cells that make up the rest of the follicle, they'll stay back to be that um, uh, corpus luteum. So these are hormone producing cells around it. And uh, in the middle is the egg surrounded by, by water. So ovulation, you remember what hormone comes from the uh, anterior pituitary to cause ovulation? Yeah, it was at LH. And you can see, it's with your bare eyes, it's so big, the follicle becomes so big that you can see it uh, going, 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 then it will pop. And women may feel a little bit of pain, a little, a little tiny bit of blood at that point, because it's kind of violent as it erupts and, you know, and, and shoots the egg out there. And the egg is in space. The egg is shot into space. Um, yeah, and it's, see where it's picked up. And you wonder, where is it fertilized? Where does the sperm meet the egg? Does it meet out here? Does it meet right here? It meets it right about here. So it'll be fertilization, and then it kind of takes a slow path, takes days before it comes down to implant in the uterus. No, just another beautiful view. And showing you all these beautiful views of, there's a mature follicle right there. And I'm not gonna ask you this, term. It's a mature follicle. It means it has tons of water, has a cloud it's on, and has this radiating crown around it. So what's the difference here between spermatogenesis, which we talked about? Remember seminiferous tubules? We had uh, spermatogonia, the stem cells. They had like low little sustentacular cells that will kind of, you know, help them and guide them. And in the middle, little spermatids and little sperm formed. And then they were moved along this tube. So one difference, as we talked, I already talked about, is that you have from one primordial germ cell, you get four sperm. With the eggs, you get, from one primordial cell, you get one egg, and then three polar bodies. They just disintegrate, turn to nothing. Because you need a big egg that has lots of cytoplasm, mitochondria, Golgi, everything that you need in that big egg. And yeah, and so sperm are produced continuously through life. Eggs are produced in a window of time and um, they all begin developing energy. They just cease and they sit there in suspended animation and then they're called up uh, throughout your life. So big difference there. Yeah, it has this resting period where early on, oh, my meiosis happens, but then they stop and that after one meiotic division and they wait and then they're called up. All right, well, let's talk about this corpora uh, Luteum would be yellow and corpora albicans will be white. So these are corpora means body again. So the corpus luteum, uh, called the luteal gland even right there. And uh, when you ovulate, that follicle remains behind, turns into this yellow body. And it, because of the lipids, the fats, it looks yellow when it's fresh. So that's why it was called yellow body. And um, it's gonna be secreting progesterones and estrogens. And it's gonna keep that uterus ready in case you get pregnant. So you need this corpus luteum to keep the hormone levels. Your uterus is waiting like, okay, okay, okay. But if like a couple of weeks go by and there's no pregnancy and there's no feedback, that corpus luteum just disintegrates and that you're gonna uh, have your period. You're gonna like disintegrate all that. So we're looking at a fresh one here, it just popped out. So this is still all like the water in here, and, but this is all gonna coalesce as one uh, corpus luteum. And this is probably an ovary of a cat or something. You see many, see all the CLs? So this one has a bunch of corpus luteum, all producing hormones, keeping the cat's uterus, you know, ready for the kittens to develop. It's about 14 days, right? So during your monthly cycle, ovulate in the middle of the cycle. It's a monthly cycle, about day 14. It varies a little bit is when ovulation occurs. Two more weeks, you're either pregnant or you're not pregnant, all right? Um, you can't be half pregnant, right? Yeah. <clears throat> but if you get pregnant, corpus luteum will last, you know, 
for months and months in your pregnancy to keep things going. Yeah. And the hormone that comes um, from the developing embryo and the placenta, HCG, uh, human chorionotropic hormone choreogonadotropic hormone. I think that's it. But HCG is what we use in, um, in um, uh, pregnancy tests. Right? So we look for that HCG because it'll come out early in pregnancy uh, in your urine. And you, we, can, we, can, we know there that you have pregnancy. But that in our bloodstream is going back and it's going to uh, tell our corpus luteum, dude, keep making the hormones because we got one. We were pregnant, all right? And if you're not pregnant, it just breaks down into this white body and yeah, just turns into scar tissue. Yeah, here it is. So I see this white body here. It's a human uh, ovary. Uh, as you can see, that's corpus albicans, huge corpus luteum. This one obviously just ovulated a big egg and it's gonna be, these. this yellow is because it's making steroid hormones, right? Estrogen, progesterone, and it's telling the uterus to, to uh, stand by. All right, so we got the ovaries where the eggs are produced. Let's follow these eggs. They're popped out into space, really. And um, they're gonna be captured by the, we'll call them oviducts. Um, they're called uterine tubes. And when I learned it was fallopian tubes. So you probably heard all three of these things. And like a tubal ligation where women get their tubes tied. So these are these tubes we're talking about here. So the egg comes out of the ovary, it's captured, it moves down this tube, it's, it's fertilized in the tube, and it goes down into the uterus. So we'll take a look uh, and uh, yeah, then maybe I'll take a break. Yeah, I, I feel like I don't wanna, I, I split it into two, yeah. So um, here you can see, here's the eggs popping out. And then, you know, if you have sex and there's sperm in there, the sperm are making their way up and they're gonna meet here in the tube. Look at the beginning of the tube, the first third of the tube. Yep, so not only do they capture the, the egg and uh, protect it, they serve as a place where the sperm can meet the egg to fertilize it. Yeah, and it takes about three days to that trip down the tube to the uterus. And by then it's a ball of cells and you have the opportunity for it to implant in the side of the uterus. Yeah, and so um, there's cilia and muscle that are pushing the egg down the tube, but the sperm got to go the other way, right? So there is some mystery there because we know mm -hmm. it's not by swimming because they're so small they couldn't get that far. So clearly there's there's a, a complex motion that allows the sperm to come up and the egg to go down like that. Yeah, and you can see how you wouldn't be able to get pregnant if you had some kind of scar or any issue with your tubes, right? If they're closed, the egg can't get through or the sperm can't get up. Sometimes it's dangerous because if the tube is semi-closed, sperm can get through, but the eggs are too big. And then you have a fertilized, fertilized egg that gets stopped. And it's called, I'll talk about ectopic pregnancy. So you can have a fertilized egg that can't make it down and then it can actually start developing here. And that's obviously a huge problem. Yeah. So this really shows it here. It shows the ovulation. And I should say, yeah, I'll hold on, I'll hold off to that type of pregnancy, but uh, that egg doesn't always make its way in there. But usually um, this, this, this oviduct or uterine tube comes out, it has a little fimbria or fingers, little cilia. They're gonna capture the egg and then they're gonna move it down the tube slowly. And uh, the sperm are going the other way. The sperm will come up and they'll meet. Day, your, your day zero when uh, your uh, sperm met your egg to make you, right? And then uh, you can see this, the, the division, and by the time it reaches the uterus, you're already a ball of cells. But the fimbriae are these little fingers that the, the end of the um, oviduct is all these little fingers. I'll show you a picture. Yeah, and there's an idea that those, those fingers move closer to the egg during ovulation, they move back to, so they really, so they can pick up that egg. All right, so this tubes, these two tubes you have on either side, right? Um, and we talk about uh, a infidibia means like a funnel where it comes in. The ampule is kind of a widened part. I'll show you how complex it is. It's really complex in here. And then it gets narrowed, the isthmus, where it finally is just pretty muscular. Before, by then the egg is, is, is already a ball of cells and it's gonna go into the uterus. So this is a big picture and it shows your ovary 
and I'm showing you down here, here's a little um, fimbriae of the, the oviduct, and here's a cross section of the duct. Look at how complicated that is. So that egg's gonna get caught in that little maze and it's gonna make its way slowly uh, down. There's a close up of it. So here's the mothership, the ovary, and the egg will be expelled and then uh, it'll be picked up by these little cilia on these little fingers that'll move the egg slowly down this tube towards the uterus. Another view, I, I show you a lot of views of the microscopic anatomy, but yeah, you can see how complicated it is. Look at all these little, yeah, so here's your egg, it's on its way down. Mm. Crazy, crazy, crazy. This is the tube, look at that. And so the egg's making its way down, and it you know, kind of makes its way slowly down. The, Little cilia are beating and moving it because it can't swim or anything like that. And there's smooth muscle on the outside that kind of pushes too. Yeah, it's getting a little in, in the weeds here, maybe, but there's some idea that the, that convoluted early part is to slow down the egg so the sperm can meet it and has time to develop before, you know, it has like three days before it gets down there. And here's by, yeah, we're at the very end here, just, just before it enters the uterus. And you can see how muscular it gets. And the uterus is just smooth muscle, solid. Okay. Yeah, and looking at the lining of the tube, as you'd expect, you have to have cilia, right? See the cilia? They're gonna be beating and that's gonna be, gonna be moving the egg. And other cells are gonna be making um, uh, mucus and secretions to help you know, help that egg along and to, uh, uh, and nutritive fluid even. So you are just babying this ovum, this egg. Um, as it goes down, it maybe gets fertilized and it's developing. You guys early on are two cells, four cells, 16 cells, right? It should move down. Beautiful view of the cilia. And that's where we, uh, you know, we first discovered cilia. This is 1831 in the oviduct of a chicken. These little cilia, that's where we first came, uh, found them. Not in your respiratory tract, but in the oviduct. Ah, gorgeous. So look at the oviduct, you see lots of cilia and other cells making nutrients and, and moisture to help that thing. Yeah, right, nice. Like your micrograph, you guys get it, cilia, right? And actually, if you guys remember early in my uh, one, one of my lectures, I talked about if you had it, I talked about cilia, I said, well, what if you have a, a cilia disorder? Well, you usually have respiratory issues and you're female, you're infertile. Because the cilia, if they're not there, the egg doesn't move. All right, and so um, like a vasectomy in the male, the, uh, the analog in the female is tubal ligation. So tubal ligation is getting your tubes tied, you know, our tubes cut and uh, it works. I mean, there's that 1% where the, there's some kind of error and, and somehow the egg can get through. But, but normally they, they, they used to just put a clamp, but now they just want to cut a piece out just to make sure and cauterize the ends so that there's uh, no chance of something get through. And really that's going to prevent you from getting pregnant. It's pretty permanent because even if you cut it and there's a little hole left, I mean, any kind of scar tissue in this delicate tube is gonna prevent that egg from getting through. Um, it's a little more involved than a vasectomy because your scrotum's on the outside. You can easily get to that. Here, um, usually you can go through the vagina, so it's not even a scar. You can get in there and with, 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 with um, tools and just, you know, cut that both of the tubes and tie them off and, you know, and get, get in there and get out. Um, um, so you can see 33% of married women, I don't know why I have to be married or not, but women using contraception, I guess, whatever the stats I got. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty damn good. All right. Much better than uh, the pill or a condom or anything like that. Uh, this shows a laparoscopic, a couple incisions and they, they blow up the abdomen and they put the tools in there, little tweezers and a little, laser and they, they cut it and uh, you uh, are done having kids. Oh yeah, well, let's take a break because I, I, I feel like I can, I can separate this lecture into two and it's a little less uh, long for you guys, huh? All right. All right, so next one I'll pick up, I'll do it right now. I'll pick up and I'll talk about the uterus and uh, uh, continue down. All right.